Good morning. It's good to see each and every one of you out this morning. And uh, I feel like I've done this before, but anyways, uh, <laughs> but we had a good number for the nine o'clock service at 73, and we thank the Lord for that, and good number here for the 11 o'clock. I trust you're ready to serve the Lord and worship Him this morning. Amen. Let's stand, if you will, and uh, it's just great to see a bunch of our friends coming back in and thanking the Lord for giving you traveling mercies and just trusting God to bless and help our time of worship this morning. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for all that you do and how that you come and so put yourselves into our lives, Lord, and you just uh, bless us in so many ways, and we give you thanks for that today. We ask that you would come and bless us in this service. We just need your anointing, your touch, Lord. We can try to do the things that we plan to do, but God, we need you to move upon us this morning. Pray that you would meet the needs that are represented here, whether they be physical or whether they're spiritual, Lord. You, we know that you're the healer. You're the one that's able to touch and help. Have your way, we pray. And Lord, as you come and bless, we'll give you all the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Tammy's going to come lead us in some singing this morning. I trust you're ready to sing unto the Lord as we worship him in song today. Number 349 in those hymnals, number 349. keeps us looking forward to yet another day with him. Praise his name. Let's try number 487, number 487. <clears throat>
Well, are you determined to make it? Amen. I trust there's no one that can convince you otherwise. I have to say sometimes we get these guys that will come around and try to sell you something. And you'll say, but I've got this model. And they say, oh, but my model's better. And I trust that the world's not trying to convince you that their model's better because I have to say serving God is worth it. And I certainly love serving Him. And I'm resolved and I'm determined by His grace I'm going to make it through. Amen. Thank you for your good singing this morning. Amen. I want to go to the Lord in prayer. And uh, we've got some different ones we've been praying for and asking the Lord to touch. We'll continue to pray for Joyce Halone. Also, uh, Juan was here this morning, but Lupe having some difficulties and just praying that God would give her a special touch and help. And then uh, there have just uh, been some others that have been amongst us that have just been dealing with some things and their lives and praying that God will give them that touch and lift them up. And uh, so let's uphold one another in prayer. Maybe have someone on your heart that you would like to mention this morning. Chuck, go right ahead. I'd like to put a prayer in for Brother Ed. He's been not been with us for the last three weeks. I don't know if he was following. Yes, let's do remember Ed Wendler. Yes. Amen. Go ahead, Gary. I would like to thank the uh, church for their prayers for my condition this summer. And my brother was just diagnosed with the uh, same condition. I'd like the church to pray for him. All right, we'll do that, certainly. Amen. Amen. All right, let's do remember them in prayer. Amen. Mike? Yeah, Pastor, we have a, our grandson is a firefighter, and he's involved in the fires in California. And uh, we just have a special prayer for him. And also for Barb, we still don't, haven't heard anything. Uh, uh, there are 30 working days to give us. <laughs> okay. We're supposed to hear from the doctor. We're All right. Let's do remember these needs in prayer this morning. Amen. Cindy? All right, let's do remember the ones traveling mercy. Pray for Fred this morning. Amen. Let's remember Linda, too. She's been sick for so long. Hayslet. Yes. And she's going to have a bunch of tests tomorrow. All right, let's do remember Linda Hayslet in prayer. Amen. Aren't you glad God's able to meet these needs and help? And so let's just uphold these ones in prayer. Trust we'll pray for this service this morning, wanting God to come and anoint and bless as he does every time, but I just really uh, covet his presence this morning. Pray for his help. Amen. My granddaughter's leaving uh, West Virginia today, traveling <coughs> to Utah, so I want her safe. All right, let's do remember in prayer. Amen. My okay. granddaughter and her family are traveling from Minnesota. to <coughs> be here tomorrow. Okay. So All right. All right, let's do remember them in prayer. Diane? I wish you'd be on the road this week sometime. Okay, we've got a lot of folks on the road, and Praying God will give them traveling mercies. Amen. Maybe go ahead, Cheryl. Can we pray for um, the people that I've asked to come tonight? I, I've asked several people, and they've all given me a straight up no without even thinking about it. So if we could just pray that those people would have a softened heart. All right, let's do remember them in prayer. Amen. Maybe you have unspoken request as well this morning by an uplifted hand. Lord knows each and every one of those needs today. Let's stand, if you will, and let's pray and ask God to meet these needs this morning. I appreciate his help when he comes, and I need his help this today. Let us pray. Lord in heaven, we thank you that we have this opportunity to be in church, to be able to come and to worship together with brothers and sisters, Lord, of like faith, and we just really appreciate that opportunity. And we don't want to take it, Lord, for granted, but just to... Take, dear Lord, and use this opportunity to honor you and to lift your name up because, God, you're certainly worthy our praise this morning. We ask that you would bless and help. And there's just a number of requests across our congregation today, Lord, of physical needs. And, Lord, and others, dear Lord, that are just uh, going through some trials and tests. Others are going to be having uh, tests done at the hospital. And, Lord, just not understanding and getting an answer back. But, God, we know that you're able to help and move in behalf of each and every one. And, we just pray for those, Lord, that are not even here in our congregation, Lord, but you're not to stop by distance. You're able to reach out and to touch them, and Lord, we're just praying that your will be done. 
We ask, dear Lord, that you would bless those spiritual needs that are here this morning. God, may the anointing of your word be so upon us, dear Lord, that we can uh, certainly understand and grasp, dear Lord, what you're trying to tell us today, dear God, through your word. We're praying that you would be with these ones that Cheryl has invited, Lord. You know the reason why they've said no, but Lord, we're just praying that, God, that you would just work on their hearts. And there are other folks that have invited and invited, dear Lord, and don't seem to get the response they would like. But God, we know that you're able to touch hearts and to move upon them, Lord. And we're just praying that this ministry, oh God, would be uh, about you, not just about us, Lord, but it's about you and lifting up your name and allowing you to work and move and seeing the miracles, dear Lord, that you're able to do in our hearts and lives. Uh, we pray that your continued touch may be upon those that are, are sick. And, dear Lord, there are some just uh, under the weather this morning. We're praying for them. And others, dear Lord, we haven't seen for a few weeks. And we're just asking you would be with Ed and touch him in a special way. Lord, each and every need is important to you. And we're asking that your will be done. Bless and help in this service this morning. We need your anointing. We need your touch. And, Lord, as you come and give that, we'll certainly give you all the praise. Because we love you and we thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated. Amen. Tammy, come lead us in another song, and you just continue to worship the Lord this morning as we sing. Number 625, number 625.
Aren't you glad for friendship? You know, I, I love the friendships that I have with you folks and different ones, and, and, but I have to say there's no friend like Jesus. And uh, what a wonderful song to be able to sing and talk about what He can do for us, and not just what He can, but what He is doing. And uh, certainly what a joy it is to have that friendship. Amen. Thank you once again for your good singing this morning. This time if our ushers will come, we'll take our morning tithes and offerings, and trust you'll do your best in your giving this morning. Mike, could I have you and Mike help me? I'm going to pick on the two mics here this morning. <laughs> Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, you've been gracious and good to us, and Lord, your blessings have been abundant. And as we give back to you this morning, we pray that certainly, Lord, that you would be honored with what uh, is accomplished with these funds. Lord, that your work might go forward. And for what you do, we'll give you praise. Bless each and every one that can give this morning. Those that can, Lord, you know their heart as well. Bless them, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your giving this morning. You know, I'd like to just share with you just a, a moment. Last uh, month was Pastor's Appreciation, and a bunch of you folks uh, went and shared gifts with us. Some brought by food, and others took us out for dinner, and others went and gave us a little cash offering, and we just so thank you, each and every one, for all of that. And uh, just such a blessing to us. Others just shared some really kind words, and, and I have to say that it doesn't, all, it doesn't go unnoticed, and we just really love having each and every one of you part of our family, and the kindness that you've shown to us as a family, we certainly love and appreciate that, and thank you so much. And I'd like to give you a couple announcements. Uh, this Saturday at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a service here in uh, honor of Pat uh, Truex, and uh, so... Uh, Pray that the Lord will come and bless us in that time as we uh, reflect on his life and, uh, and just uh, have a, a short moral service here at 11 o'clock. And so you come and be a part of that, and I'm sure uh, Bonnie will be much appreciative of that. So we'll be doing that. And then also uh, we have a service time tonight at uh, 6.30, and we're going to put together some music for you as a family. And uh, I don't know if we want to call it a concert or what, but we're going to have you come and be a part of that. And I'd love to just uh, worship the Lord in a song this evening. And uh, so you pray the Lord to help us in that endeavor. And then uh, Wednesday, we have our family focus and uh, 6 to 8 in, in the evening. And we'll be uh, working with uh, families and young people and children and praying God to help us to, 
to grow that aspect of our church, and you pray that God's will certainly be done and help there. And then we have Bible study at 1030, and uh, that'll be men and women's Bible study at the Fellowship Hall on Thursday. So, uh, Lord, will help us in that endeavor. Pray that the Lord will give Tammy and I strength and wisdom, which direction to go. I have to say that there are lots of things we can study in God's Word, but uh, sometimes He has a direction He wants us to go, and uh, we just want His will to be done in that. So pray the Lord will help in that. And then also, next Sunday is the second Sunday of the month. And I tell you what, these Sundays, when we've got a one Sunday that we do something different, it, they roll around really quick. It seems like life just zips right on by. And uh, here we are, another dinner Sunday next uh, week, and uh, that'll be at the 5 o'clock slot, all right? Because we have two services in the morning, so it'll be 5 o'clock, and Italian is what's on the menu. And uh, like I told them in the first service, dig back into your roots there and find those Italian uh, recipes and uh, bring those favorite dishes that you have. And uh, so that'll be a good time. And then right after that, we're going to come over here, and those that have signed up for choir and have choir practice. And uh, so you just uh, come and be a part of that. If you haven't signed up for choir, uh, you need to. And uh, so have you, more is better when it comes to a choir. And uh, we'd love to have you sing in that. And so it'll be a good time for Christmas. And uh, so just pray the Lord will bless in that endeavor. We thank Tanya for uh, offering to take that over. It gives Tammy a little break. And so we've got a brand new choir director uh, this time. And uh, so that's going to be exciting. And we'll just see how well daughter and father can work together with the music and all that. But anyways, we'll see how that works out. But uh, well, thank the Lord for his many blessings. Thank you for being here this morning. And uh, just great to be able to get together to worship him. Tammy and I have a song we want to sing for you. And you pay attention to the words today. I've had many tears and sorrows I've had questions for tomorrow There have been times I didn't know right from wrong But in every situation God gave blessed consolation That my trials come you only make me strong. I've been to lots of places. And I've seen a lot of faces. There's been times I felt so all
to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God through it all, through it all. I've learned to depend upon His Word. Sing it with us, will you? Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in you learn to do that to depend upon his word to trust him oh I tell you that's where I guess as my teacher used to say that's where the rubber meets the road <laughs> because as I'm going to talk to you this morning sometimes we don't always know what's in store for us and then sometimes when it does finally come we're still perplexed we don't know how to deal with it how to handle with it but you know God is certainly able I'm glad that through it all though I'm glad that we can trust in Him and lean upon Him. If you'll take your Bibles this morning, I'd direct your attention to Jeremiah chapter 17. A little bit of scripture reading, verses 5 through 8. Jeremiah chapter 17. I don't know if any of you got mail this week, uh, but I have a funny feeling you had no clue what was going to come in the mailbox, did you? But I want to talk about that this morning. We don't know what's going to come in the mailbox, but uh, I'm certain to tell you that there are some things we can do about what comes in the mailbox. And uh, if you found yourself frustrated at the one who brought you bad news, or maybe rather than trying to understand the one for whom the news originated, in other words, have you ever been frustrated with the postman? Have you been frustrated with those individuals that come into your life? And sometimes it's things that comes into our life broken washing machine, uh, maybe there's an object of frustration there, or maybe a broken computer, I told him in the early service, that's my mother-in-law's problem, she has a broken computer sometimes, and she calls me, and uh, so we go over and try to fix it, you know, and uh, it can be a trial, I tell you, you know how a computer can be a trial, maybe it's a child, maybe it's a grumpy boss, maybe it's a rebellious student, or an unreasonable teacher, demanding something, you know, that you can't seem to come forward, maybe it's a parent, you say, well, they brought me bad news. They brought me this. Maybe it's cancer. Maybe it's abuse. Maybe some would say, well, it's just a parking place. Well, you know, God can help us to deal with the trials and the tests in our lives. Some of those things in the whole scope of things are very insignificant. When you look at the fact that you didn't get the parking place you wanted, really, when it's all said and done, is that really going to hurt you that bad? No, but sometimes it can be frustrating. I, I heard somebody the other day talking about the fact that... Uh, they would just say they love to get on people's nerves, and so they would sit in the coveted parking space and eat their lunch <laughs> with the car in reverse. <laughs> and uh, so he'd sit there, and then he said as soon as they would uh, look like they would move forward, you know, he'd back up a little bit, and then he'd change his mind and put it back in park again, you know. Uh, that's, oh, my goodness. I hope I never run into one of those people, but anyways, nonetheless... Look at Jeremiah chapter 17, and he says thus in verse 5 and reading through verse 8, he says, Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man, and maketh flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, and a salt land, and not inhabited. Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord, and whose hope the Lord is, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. 
Did you notice there's a part there I think is very relevant for us humans here. It says, and you shall not know when the heat cometh. I don't know if that was just uh, unique for us here, but uh, we, we know when the heat comes, don't we? But what he's talking about here is when we are in the place where God wants us to be, when we are in that situation right that fits exactly what God wants for our life, when these things come, they're not a trial to us. They're not a situation that seems insurmountable and unable to deal with. I remember several years ago, uh, Dustin and I, family, matter of fact, for that matter, were involved in paintball, and we did that as a fun sport, but then also kind of a business in some ways, kind of to fund the hobby, you know, buying and selling and trading. And we would get uh, these uh, guys we would order off from online to buy a used gun or, you know, a hopper or whatever it was where parts we needed for the for what we were doing. And uh, we would always, when they would come, we would set the box on the table, and you would pull out your phone, and you begin to video as you unbox the product that you got. And the reason for that, and we would find that right in this congregation this morning, what you say is used and in good condition may not be what I say is used and in good condition. And so what we would do, we would take a picture or the videos of it. That way, if you ever had to take a make a claim because it wasn't as advertised, then you could have some evidence of saying, here, you can see we didn't fiddle with it. We didn't do anything with it. We unboxed it right here's the video. And so you would have to do that. And there were a couple times where we would have to do that. But as a whole, most people were pretty good about what they had advertised. But you don't know what you're going to get in the box. There's an individual in the Word of God that I want to take a look at here this morning that did not know for sure what was coming in the box when he got his mail. And you'll find that story in the book of Job. You will find in Job chapter 1, verse 14 and 19, I'm just going to jump right into the middle of this and just show you where Job's at. We understand the conflict. We understand what happens. Satan comes to God, has that conversation, and says, uh, you know, and, and God says, have you considered my servant Job? And it, Satan says, well, you know, there's, there's no reason to consider him. You put a hedge all around him. You've done all these things. You bless everything that he touches. And God says, well, no, why don't you go ahead and consider him? And he holds back and allows some things to come into Job's life, and Job becomes the better man for it. Now, when you look at the ferociousness of this attack, when you begin to look at verse 14 in chapter 1 of the book of Job, it says, There came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen are plowing and the asses feeding beside them, and said, And the Savians fell upon them and took them away. Not just a team of oxen and a couple donkeys out in the field. No. 500 yoke of oxen, 500 asses. So we're, we're not talking, you know, just something, well, you know, I can go buy another one. No, we're talking some serious devastation here. You see that he says, and they have slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped and alone to tell them, to tell thee. And so he goes on and says, I'm left alone. While he's yet speaking, it goes on in verse 16 and says, The fire of God has fallen from heaven and hath burned up the sheep. 7,000 sheep. Not only that, but the servants that took care of them. These were good men. These were good people, these servants. These are ones that Job had put into trust with his animals and things because what happens, Job needs a sacrifice, he needs the best of the best for the sacrifice. These are his servants. So there's a relationship, there's rapport there. There's not, we're not talking just about just a, oh, just a casual hire, no. We're probably talking about people that Job knows very well. They're gone. While he's yet speaking, there come also another and said, The Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camels. Not just a little dromedary camel out there that they never used very much. No, 3,000 camels. And have carried them away, yea, and slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and I only am escaped and alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, you imagine Job's mind processing all of this. And I believe God's word, just as it's telling us here, I believe this come in secession because I've got news for you. The enemy that was up against Job is the very same enemy that's up against your soul. We may not lose our camels, sheep, and donkeys, but I'm here to tell you the onslaught of the enemy against your mind is just as bombarding at times, is it not? 
And as he speaks, so there also came another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters, seven sons and three daughters, were eating and drinking wine in the eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house, and it fell upon the young men, and they are dead, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. We're talking about severe persecution from the onslaught of the enemy. This enemy is just as real, folks, as you and I are sitting here today. Don't ever underestimate what the enemy can do. But as we look at Job's picture, we've got to look beyond the postman. We've got to look beyond those couple servants that have come because you know what? Sometimes, and maybe you've been guilty of this, uh, where all of a sudden we get frustrated and angry with the postman. We know the circumstances, but we get angry with the one that has brought us the news, and we lash out at them. You've got to get beyond that. You've got to get beyond the package. You've got to get beyond the problem. Job saw, Job saw the providence of God. No stronger demonstration of grace can hardly be demonstrated than what was demonstrated by Job here. But consider first, who brought the need for this grace? Who brought the need for this trial and this test? What he was needing help from? Was it God or was it Satan? Satan is the one that done the evil. God held his hand to allow some things to come into his life. What? To shape Job into the individual that he needed to be. You say, but he took his children. I've told you before, and I'll tell you again, my mother used to pray a prayer, and I imagine she still prays it today, whatever it takes. God knew what it would take for Job. God knows what it's going to take for you. He knows what it's going to take for me. My hope and prayer is, Lord, and maybe my plead for mercy is, Lord, may this never come on that proportion to me. And I have to say, when I look across this congregation, we're a blessed bunch of people. I don't know all your stories. I don't know all the things that have transpired in your life, but I know some of you have been through it. We've got some friends, as a matter of fact, a friend that has just, uh, in the past year and a half, has gone through more than I can just hardly wrap my mind around. Loss of loved ones. Evil perpetrated on other loved ones. And then the enemy comes in like a flood and bombards your mind and causes all these things to come and just think, well, why this and why that? And one of the first things, and friend, if you're walking with Christ and serving him, I tell you what, don't allow the enemy to make you think that it's because what you have done. The enemy likes to jump on our shoulder and say, well, you know what? If you wouldn't have done this just a few days ago, then this wouldn't have happened. He likes to put the blame on you because you know what? That blame and that guilt will kill you. It will take you down. The enemy likes to put a lot of blame on those and we find out what is it. It's the enemy himself who's bringing about the evil and the things in our world today. Job chapter 1, verses 21 and 22. Job wisely understands that Satan had no authority over him. And could I remind you this morning that Satan is not a master. Satan is a servant. He doesn't have the power of a master. The master is the one you and I serve. The master is the one who sent his only begotten son that he might give his life for you and I. He's the master. Oh, you say, Satan can do what he wants to. He has limitations to what he can do. Only what he is allowed to do is only through what has been weighed out in your behalf. God stands in the way of Satan doing everything that he would do to you this morning. And the very proof of that is the fact that you're still here. He would take our lives this morning if he could. His whole purpose, his whole goal is to throw up, stop the plan of God. But you know what? He cannot do it because why? He is not master. He is under the authority of someone else. And I tell you what, the gates of hell have been locked. I tell you what, he just, God took the keys away from him. Jesus took the keys away from him. The death, hell, and the grave did not need to fear us this morning. 
Job 1 and verses 21 and 22, Job says, And naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And here's the verse I love so much. He says in verse 22, In all this Job sinned not. Don't allow the obstructions and the persecution and the trials of the day to give you cause to sin. God's able to keep us. He's able to keep us. He said not only did he not sin, but he didn't charge God foolishly. I think one of the first things to do, we realize God is in charge. We realize God has all power, ability. He knows all things. And therefore, the enemy, one of the first things he likes for us to do is put blame upon God. God, you did this to me. Maybe God allowed it. Maybe God allowed some things to come through the mail. Maybe he's allowed that trial. Maybe he's allowed that health issue. Maybe he's allowed that loss. But is there not a greater purpose? It makes me think during the 2010 Winter Olympic Games in Vancouver, one of the things the TV uh, news people did a lot of, they would uh, put a lot of pictures and video footage of the parents watching their children perform. And when they would uh, watch and uh, do that, they would oftentimes, you know, I would have to say that those parents were just thrilled with the success their children were having. They're finally in the Olympics. They're competing against the best of the best. But I'm going to guess there were probably some moments earlier on, maybe a year, two, three, who knows how long before, that if those parents would have seen what was happening when the trainer had his hands on their child, so to speak. What kind of test he put them through. The effort, he says, no, you've got to do it better than that. No, that's not good enough. We're going to push you a little more. Pushed them to maybe there were tears flowing. Maybe they went home and they were hurting because of the effort that they had to exert because the trainer was pushing them and pushing them. Parents didn't see a bit of that what, when that child was performing with the best of the best. Oftentimes our world sees us putting on the best of the best as the church. But I'm here to tell you the church has gone through it. This is actually the National Day of Prayer for the persecuted church. To think of what some of our people go through, what God's children go through, just to be able to say, you know what, he's my child, he's my, he's my Lord, I'm his child. I, have to, I haven't faced anything. I haven't faced anything. Regrettably, some accuse God of being un unloving and when testing and trying his children. Yet I believe the opposite is true. God never loses his love for each and every one of us. Some of you may be old enough to remember this. Uh, you don't have to admit to it if you are, all right? <laughs> they used to take peaches when they wanted to take and get the skins off of them to be able to get to the fruit, to be able to can them or do whatever they were, they were going to process it. They would give them a lye bath. They would put them in lye, and that would take that skin right off of there. Now, I don't ever remember that. I do remember my mom scalding those peaches and to get those skins off, and they would come off easily like that. And uh, that was something that we did just about every fall. And uh, we, mom and dad would buy, as a matter of fact, it was then several years ago, but it was cheaper to buy peaches and can them than it is to buy them off the shelf in, in the town, you know. And so they would do that, and they'd buy several bushels of peaches because there were eight of us kids, so we're going to eat a lot of peaches, I guess. And uh, so we would have, as a little kid, you know, we, the boxes then become our toys. And then I had some older siblings that thought it was fun to take us little guys, put us in the box, and roll us down the hill. And uh, we thought it was fun at first, but then, you know, after a few bumps and bangs going down the hill, that wasn't near as uh, exciting as we thought. And so it was pretty, probably, pretty much a one-time thing. But uh, nonetheless, so, but what was the whole purpose of the, taking the skins off of those peaches is to get to the goodness that's there. Has God brought some things into your life to help get to the goodness that's there? 
Is God removing, you know, and I'm just giving you some scenarios here. I don't know that I'm not trying to hit people with this or anything. I'm just, I'm just throwing something. Is God removing maybe the financial health to remove your longing for things? You know, when we long for things so much that this world, that becomes what it's all about. You know, we miss out a lot. I've known some folks that were just absolute workaholics. I go in spurts. Uh, you know, I'll work for, you know, and work until I hurt myself, and then I'll take about two days rest, you know, and then get back at it again, you know, go in spurts. But I tell you, I've known some that just work from daylight to dark, and then they come home, you know, from their day job, and then they jump right in, and they work hard there, and life just continues to go on, and then all of a sudden they turn around and they say, where are my kids? I missed something here. Why is Joey doing this and Sarah doing that or whoever their names are, you know? Why, why are they... And the relationship with the spouse is not as close as it ought to be because why we've got so involved and think, well, we've got to have some things. Our world can so infuse that in us. We live in a world where it's want, 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 want. And they'll do everything they can for you to have it whether you can afford it or not. Is he bringing petty trials? Is God allowing some little things to happen in your life because he's seeking to remove maybe your oversensitiveness to some things? I was becoming a little oversensitive here a week or so ago, and Tammy helped me out. She said the thing, you know, I was, I guess, bothered by the, all the complaining I was hearing, but I was complaining about the complaining. She said, you better be careful because she says you're going to get bitter over those things. She was right. And you know what? I just got to let it go. We live in a very sensitive world. We've got people so worked up it takes nothing for us to be able just to rouse somebody up. And you know what, folks? The, let's not let the church be that way. We're following after God, but maybe he's bringing some things into our lives to help us to realize, you know what, the people and the events around us, don't be so sensitive. Keep our focus. What is our focus? Our focus is not on the deliver, the courier that brought the package. Our focus is not even necessarily on the package. Our focus is on the one who can deliver us. The one who can pick us up, help us right where we are, whatever that situation may be. Maybe God's given, you know, a little extra authority in your life. Brought someone into your life that has some extra authority and just and you're having trouble submitting to that. Parents, hard to submit to children, isn't it? Get up in years and all of a sudden, you know, kids are coming into our lives saying, you know what, I, I think you ought to do it this way. Mom, Dad, you can't do it that way anymore. This is the way to do that. That's tough. I'm not going to be that way. I just know I'm not going to be that way at all. Uh, but I guess if it's hereditary, I'm in trouble because I, I know what my parents are like. <laughs> They're not, not bad, not bad. But you, can, you see moments. Is God revealing a lack of submission? Because, you know, I have to say, when you look at Job and his whole experience here, there's something that just rises right to the surface. Job doesn't understand a lot of it. He's got friends that obviously do not because you can see their wonderful advice that they gave him. His wife's not even grasping a hold of this. But Job still maintains his view of God. And his view of God is, my God is still good. My God is still great. My God is one that even if I perish in the midst of this, because what do we find? Satan wasn't happy with just taking his children and his livestock. No, he says, I want to touch that man. And so he asked permission. Do you notice? He had to ask for permission. And God in his faithfulness, God in his wonderful promise of knowing all things, says, yeah, I'll let you touch Job with his health too. And Job still comes through with the beautiful, beautiful picture of his life and saying, you know what? My God's still great. My God's still good. I see no reason to point fingers and shake my finger in God's face and say, it's all your fault.
Philippians 4, chapter 6, verse 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. But you know, when I lose grasp of who he is, and I begin to focus on the package, and I begin to focus on how bad it is for me, and begin to have those pity parties. Nobody here has ever had a pity party, I'm sure, for yourself, but uh, I've had a couple, I guess, I have to admit. It's hard to get people to join in that, isn't it? Psalm 37 and 23, what does he say? The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. What is that? Prepared by the Lord. His steps are prepared, and he delighteth in his way. What's God doing in your life? The struggle, the burden, the heartache, the cares? Is it bringing forth the goodness of who he is, or is it becoming, are we becoming the grouch? Are we becoming that person that becomes so negative? We're becoming that individual that we just look at everything through, uh, you know, just that negative glass and say, surely no good could ever come out of that. I'm here to tell you, God allows something in your life. Work through it. Live through it. Keep God at the center of all that you're doing, and you're going to be able to step forward looking as gold. Because why? God will keep us. He kept Job, and what do we find? We find that Job then is blessed two times of what he had before. Now, he didn't get 14 sons and six daughters. He was probably thankful for that. But anyways, nonetheless. One individual put it this way, and I think they might be right on. It's one of those little hidden principles of God's Word. God doesn't treat people as possessions. So what did he do? He gave him seven sons and three daughters, but he did not give back. He didn't give him double of those because why? They're living souls. They're people. They're important to him. But you know what? Job still had a hurt and a burden for those that he had lost. That never went away. I have to say sometimes the scars of life are very difficult to deal with. But there's one thing that I do know, that even though the scars of life are difficult to deal with, my God never leaves me nor forsakes me. He holds my hand. He pulls me through. I may, he may never see fit to take an out of his grace and his mercy and just pull Phil out of every bad situation. Matter of fact, I know he doesn't. There are some things he just allows me to sit right in the midst of it. But you know what he does? He sits right there with me. He shows that he cares. He loves with an everlasting love. We should never succumb to the wrong thinking that God made us sin to bring about his good will for our lives. Some people say, well, you know what, I just can't. Well, listen here, just because wrong happens, God can make something good out of it. But I tell you what, if it's a choice of sin on our part, God's not going to turn around and make something good out of that. I had someone tell me some time ago, it's been a long time ago, and said, you know what, I, I went to the bar, and that's where I met my spouse, and I know that was God's will. And I said, I'm pretty sure it wasn't. <laughs> that's what they told me. I was like, I am pretty sure that's not the case. But you know, when evil does come, and sometimes it's just life, sometimes it is those around us. And sometimes God allows some things to come into our lives. Job said in 42 and verse 5, he said, I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. He didn't, all he could do, he could hear everything that was going on around about him. He had heard of the truths, but you know what? That's why we sang the song as we did this morning. I can still depend on his word. God is still God. Satan may be Satan, but I tell you what, he is certainly not one that is out of control except for what God allows. He certainly is under control. God only allows certain things. Paul prayed in Philippians 3 and verse 10, he says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. 
Psalm 1 and 3 says, And he shall be like a tree planted by the river's water, which echoes the very text that I read to you this morning out of Jeremiah. What is it? When I have put myself in God's hands, whatever God brings to me will not be to my demise. It will bring forth good. It will bring forth greatness. It will be everything I need it to be for me to be exactly what he desires. Am I submissive to that? Am I okay with what comes in the mailbox? Am I okay with when I open that package and say, oh, this isn't what I expected, Lord? And he says, I know it isn't, but let me help you with it. And as he helps us, we learn who we are, we learn who he is, and we see the finished product, which is a beautiful picture of grace. Oh, what a joy it is to serve God. And I have to say, I'm saying that without ever having gone through anything even close to what Job had to go through. But I'm confident I can do it with his help. Because whatever comes in the mailbox, God knows. And it may not have come from him, but God is the deliverer of what comes. Hang on to him. It's worth the journey. Amen. Let us stand. Can we sing that chorus one time again as we stand? Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word let's bow our heads for prayer lord your goodness to us is far beyond what we deserve but god we thank you so much lord we thank you for the trials the test you brought us through we thank you for the product lord you're producing within us and god may we never blame you but lord may we always look to your strength and help encourage and lift up each and every one lord you know what we're going through right now we pray for your strength and your comfort in each and every heart and Lord, as we go our separate ways, may the world see that God is real and he's alive. Bless us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.